In this tutorial, I want to talk about how to create and run scan processes. So I'm going to provide this file, um, but you can use any file similar to this. Uh, basically, I selected this file because it has a bunch of individual scans taken with a, a blue light scanner. And it has a lot of things that need to be done to it, so you can actually string together a few tools. So it's just a good demonstration file to show this tool. You can also use it to process any scanner that usually gives you kind of raw data, whether it's point clouds or separate scans, um, whether it's a blue light or a portable CMM, something like that. The scan process really come in handy. So if you click over here on the Home tab, you see Scan Process Designer and Run Scan Process. So we're going to create one first, and then we'll talk about how to run it after. Um, so you see default when you come in here, it opens up this panel. And you see that you have all the, these are the commands that you're allowed to use inside of the scan process. These are the default ones that are built into the software. And then you have some options here where you can create a new one, which is what we're going to do. And it's a little tricky because when you do create a new one, you see it, it names it here and it puts it down here at the bottom. So you can name this. So I'm just going to rename that. And then you can proceed to drag your commands over. So if I drag in a line between scan data, you see here that there's a little bit of misalignment. Plus, I always run this regardless on individual scans like this. Um, and then we'll click over to Global Find. I always change this, even when I'm using the regular software, to 10. And then we'll just leave everything else the same here. So you'll see in this little mini script, what it's going to do is go ahead and do a Global Find. And if you're not sure if like there's big problems with misalignment and stuff, you could actually run that multiple times if you really wanted to. Um, now merge, I'm just going to use the volume merge and then bump that up like one. That's fine. And then I'll say leave the original scan data. I tend to do that as a backup but always anyway. And then hit OK. So yeah, we're going to go ahead and then merge. Um, I tend to run a global remesh on it. Um, and then I'll turn off make solid because I don't have the entire scan. I mean, we could. Yeah, let's go ahead and use it to make it a solid anyway, even though it's going to fill in some information just to show how that works. You can always come in here and edit this and turn this off if you want to later. So global remesh. And then I always tend to run decimate to reduce it down to a very specific size that I want it to be. So looking right past it right now, where did it go? Right there. So decimate, and I'll say reduction by polyphase count. Let's make it less than 500,000 triangles. And then you could always run a healing wizard if you want to. And then you see that we have options to export the file or whatever. And then I tend to have it automatically, if I tend to intend to model this, I'll come in and say, hey, let's go ahead and run an auto segment uh, region group on it and hit OK. So there we created our, our tutorial, I mean our scan process. And you see there's lots of icons in here where you can go ahead and exit the process designer, run it from here if you want to, run um, run batch process. Oh, jump over to the batch process instead um, because you can use these scan processes to run batch processes too. Now the difference is a scan process is kind of like running a batch process inside of the software. A batch process is like it opens up a separate window and it'll grab files one at a time outside of the software, process them, and then save them back out of the software. So it's like this external tool. In a way, these tools do the same thing, but this is internally, whatever's loaded inside of the software, I run a predefined script on. And then the other one is like running a predefined script on files that are sitting somewhere on my drive. Um, so that's what that means. Um, you can obviously delete all these. Uh, but one important thing is this export. So I can say I want to export 
my scan process as an XML file. And then if you want to use the one that I just created, you can hit import and I'll put it with the files here. So you can just open this up and import the scan process and then come over and run it. Now, typically the way it works is I have these built for different types of scan data and different purposes. Um, so if I get a data set from a portable CMM or a certain type of blue light and I've had those settings tuned for it, what I always do, then I will build one of those scan processes, come over here and hit run. You can select it from the dropdown, select what meshes you want to use. I'm just going to click all meshes in this instance. And you can say to remove the original data, use a specified name for the output, all of that stuff if you want to. And then you can hit run. So now it'll go ahead and it will do that global find. It'll do the merge. It'll go ahead and it'll output that cleaned mesh with region groups on it. So we'll just hold on for a second and let it finish and we'll continue. So because I have it set to keep the original data, I can just shift select all these, put them into a group and turn them off. So here is the scan that it produced and I'll turn off the regions, but it went ahead and merged those together, filled those holes. This is kind of why I didn't, don't usually tell it to fill all the holes, but I just wanted to show that that is possible. You can go ahead and make it watertight using that as well. And then you could even have it go ahead and export this out of the file if you wanted to. Um, so this is the process. Now, if you just want to run those export import, there is one other area that the scan processes do come into play. So with portable CMMs, if you're connected to one and you scan with, for example, this one right here, when you're done, it pops up with a window that says, do you want to run scan process? You can actually select the one that you created here. And as it exits the plugin, it'll go ahead and automatically run it. That's like another area where they're implemented that people rarely use, but it is something that's interesting to speak to. Um, so that's an overview of how scan processes work.